Hi, it's Penny here, and today we're going to be talking about all the books that I read in June. Now, in June, I did read 18 books, and normally I would split this up into two videos so it didn't get too long. However, I couldn't think of a way to sensibly split these up. So we're just going to try and get through it all in one video. I'm going to try and be concise, and I will link uh, the vlogs where I read all these books down below if you want more of my thoughts, but hopefully this will just give you an overview and an idea about whether you might want to read these books. And as usual, I am going to do this book battle style, which means I pair up all the books, I battle them against each other until we come up with the best book of the month. I've read so many books, I don't even have any ideas about what they might be. So let's work it out. Oh, and I do also think I'm ordering this from kind of the books targeted at the youngest demographic through to the eldest. So again, timestamps down below if you want to skip to the books that you're most interested in. But anyway, let's talk about the books. So our first battle is going to be between the two Babysitter's Club graphic novel adaptations that I read up against When I See Red by Britta Tickentrup. So firstly, I read book 10 and 11, I think. I might be making those numbers up. Uh, for the Babysitter's Club graphic novel adaptations, the Babysitter's Club books were my favorite books when I was a kid, basically just following this club of babysitters, going out babysitting, but also just having like general life struggles. I learned a lot from them as a kid, and I have been enjoying these graphic novel versions. They're a little bit modernized, they're quite fun, and really it's just a good nostalgic time for me. I would say the first one that I read, Christy and the Snobs, I don't think it was the best adaptation, because for me the most significant part of that book is that Christy's dog died, which had a significant impact on me as a kid, and I just don't feel like that part of the story was given enough emphasis. But I did like Goodbye Stacy Goodbye. In this one, Stacy has to move back to New York, and, and she's kind of dealing with the fact that some things about that are exciting, but also it means leaving all her new friends behind. And I thought that adaptation was more well done. Then the other book in this battle is When I See Red. So this is just a children's book with like a few words on every page and some really beautiful art, just kind of expressing what it feels like to be angry. And I really enjoyed reading it, like just letting myself feel those feelings. I especially like at the end, it kind of talks about how great it can feel to be calm after you've been angry. The only thing I couldn't help but think about is I don't think I would want a child to read this without then having a conversation with them about anger because it does talk a lot about the power in anger, but I didn't feel like it talked enough about the potential harm that you can cause by being angry. I feel like if you've read this unsupervised as a kid, you could come away with the idea that it's always good to let your anger out and be very destructive about it, which honestly, not always a great message for children. But I did still find it a very cathartic read as an adult, so I enjoyed my read. Still, as far as the book battle goes, I think for this one, I know I've kind of got three books here because we're trying to be concise, um, but I think I would actually pick the best one to be Goodbye Stacy Goodbye. I think it was the most fun story, probably with the best lessons for kids. I can't help but read kids books and think about what lessons they have in them. I've just become too much of an adult, but also I just enjoyed the nostalgia. So we're going to put Goodbye Stacy Goodbye through to the next round. Then our next battle is between Half Past Peculiar Book One Finders Creepers by Derek Friedolfs and Dustin Nguyen up against Watch Hollow by Gregory Fennaro. I probably said those names wrong. I try my best. So firstly, let's talk about Half Past Peculiar. I mainly picked this up because I recognized Dustin Nguyen's name. He is the artist for the Descender graphic novel series, which I really loved. And I would say that my favorite part of this book is that it does have little bits of comics spliced in between the actual story but the actual story itself was terrible. So it starts out okay. We've got these two siblings, a brother and a sister. Their parents are always away traveling around the world, but they run like a pet finding business and there's always pets going missing all around this town. Honestly, the owners are very irresponsible. So they're doing this pet finding business. They're usually very successful. However, they have never found their dog that went missing. And then this other dog turns up and kind of lures them to this other mysterious house. And I feel like I could give you some kind of hint about what happens at the house, but you don't really find that out until the end of the book. And in fact, this whole book felt like set up for what's going to happen in this house. But pretty much nothing happened in this book, and the writing was just terrible. The way that the characters were explained was very inconsistent with some of the things that they did, and just very disappointing. I wouldn't even recommend this for kids. There was just nothing in this that was good, except the pictures. 
Then we had Watch Hollow and this one was much better. Again, we have a brother and a sister, but in this one, their father gets offered a lot of money to go to this house and fix this clock that is supposed to power the house. It's like a very fancy clockwork clock. It's clockwork clock, a tautology. Anyway, so they go to this house and then there's some magical things going on. The clock has all these different holes for animals, but the animals are missing. But the animals turn up, it just say on the back of the book that there's clockwork animals and there's this very magical element to it, but also this forest kind of encroaching on the house and this mysterious person living out in the forest and the family kind of has to work together to overcome this evil out in the forest. I thought it was a really beautiful story. There were some really adorable moments as well as some like genuinely scary moments. And as well, I thought it was well written, which is why I am definitely going to pick Watch Hollow over Half Past Peculiars because while there's no way that I would continue the series for Half Past Peculiars, I have the second book somewhere behind me, but I can't tell with things being reversed. Anyway, I have the second book in the series ready to read next month, so I definitely enjoyed that one. So we're putting Watch Hollow through to the next round. Okay, then our next battle is between two Skullduggery Pleasant books that I read by Derek Landy and In Every Generation by Kendara Blake. So firstly, Skullduggery Pleasant is a long-running series. I think I read books five and six, so Mortal Coil and Deathbringer. Uh, so we're following this girl Stephanie who's been introduced to the magical world and now she's being mentored by Skullduggery Pleasant who is this skeleton detective. Uh, and they've saved the world many times and in Mortal Coil and Deathbringer they did it again. You always know they're going to do that. These books are very action-packed and that part of the story is not my favorite. I think the story is very convoluted, but there are some parts that I like, especially I like the humor actually. There's some parts in these books which I laugh out loud and I do enjoy those parts. So I'm trying to finish off at least the first part of the series and then depending how that goes we'll see if I finish off kind of the second half of the series. I'm actually thinking now, I know Deathbringer was about the necromancers, kind of achieving their religious ultimate goal, which they think is great for people, but possibly not as great as they think. Mortal Coil though, I actually can't even remember what that one is about, so that is not a good sign. Then we've got In Every Generation. So this is a book written in the world of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's set after the TV shows, but it doesn't really take into account anything that happened in the comic books. So I'm not really clear on is it canon, is it not canon? I'd probably say no, because to me it didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so basically we're following Willow's daughter Frankie, and Frankie has always thought of herself as a witch, an eco-witch if you will, but now she's also got slayer powers. Uh, so she's trying to come to terms with what she's going to do with those, as well as having to fight a big bad that comes to town. So as I said, I didn't feel like the setup for the story made a lot of sense and I didn't really enjoy what happened with the characters from the original TV series. So we get Spike, Willow and Oz and like brief mentions of Buffy, Xander and Dawn. But like I thought the characterizations of the adults didn't really make sense and the way that Frankie didn't include these very experienced vampire slayers when she was fighting the big bad didn't make any sense either. What happened with all the other slayers didn't get wrapped up within this first book so that's very annoying because now I have to read the next book but also didn't make any sense and the characters reactions to it didn't make any sense. However once I let go of the fact that it wasn't making any sense I did actually enjoy the ending of it. I thought it was fun. It does have a lot of parallels with the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer series, but it was still a lot of fun. I talked about that one too much if we're trying to be concise. I think I'm just trying to put off the actual battle because neither of these stands out to me as being necessarily better. They both had their problems. Probably I would have to go with Deathbringer because I thought the humor was better and I do think the plot was better as well. Okay, then our next battle is going to be between The Atlas Six by Olive e. Blake and Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. So The Atlas Six had a lot of hype lately and I'm not entirely sure it deserves that hype, but I do think the series has a lot of potential. So it's kind of a dark academia book where these six people discover that they are the latest candidates to be part of this secret society where they get access to the Library of Alexandria. However, once they start this induction process, they discover that only five of them are going to get through into the next year of study and one of them is going to have to die. Uh, I do feel like 
everything that happened with this research at the Library of Alexandria wasn't properly described and even the whole situation with one of them having to die was not very clear either. And as well there's this whole mystery kind of going on but you don't really know there's a mystery until quite near the end and there weren't really enough clues and then you kind of just get a big dump at the end of what's going on which is what made me interested for the next book but I'm hoping because the next book is going to be traditionally published that we'll get a bit better structure in the second book and that that will help a lot but I did really like the characters. They were a lot of fun and I, I liked the magical powers and some of the stuff they were studying was really interesting. We just didn't get enough of it. So I think it has a lot of potential, but there were a few things lacking in the first book. Then Good Girl Bad Blood is the second book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. So thus we follow this girl named Pip who in the first book helped to solve this murder investigation, this cold case, and in the second book her friend's brother goes missing and she starts trying to investigate what's happened to him and finds out a whole bunch of other stuff. For me this one had a bit of a shaky start but I do think a lot of that was the audiobook narrator's style, especially the way that they do certain voices. However once we got into the mystery I was totally engaged and I really enjoyed it. I do think our main character can be a little bit over the top sometimes but that is kind of a theme that's being addressed in the book so it's kind of intentional and I just think the investigations are a lot of fun to follow along with, try and figure out all the clues and just see how the main character Pip is figuring out the clues and getting more information. So this is hard actually because I feel like I was a lot more engaged in Good Girl Bad Blood but the world and the ideas in the Atlas 6 were much better so how do I really rate these against each other? I guess I'll probably have to go with the execution so I will pick Good Girl Bad Blood to go through to the next round just because it delivered on its potential rather than just promising it. Then our next battle we have more investigations so we've got Wildfire by Alona Andrews up against White Knight by Jim Butcher. So Wildfire is the third book in the Hidden Legacy series, the third and final book in Nevada's trilogy. So this trilogy follows a family that runs this private investigation company in this world where people have different kinds of psychic abilities that are inherited genetically. So this first trilogy in the series follows Nevada, the older sister, as she is trying to solve these cases and starts to get very involved with some of these very powerful families that have a lot of very strong psychic abilities. But at the same time her family is developing their own very special and strong abilities. So this final book has its own investigation where we're trying to track down a husband that's gone missing. At the same time we're cementing this family's position in society and Nevada's relationship with the love interest because I know the covers make this look like a romance and there is a romantic element but that's not the main thing. The main thing is definitely the politics of this magical world and these murder investigations. So I really like the investigations. I don't mind the romance in these. I do tend to like the way that Alona Andrews does romance. The only thing I would say is I do feel like I would have preferred this series to be longer and for the romance to be a little bit more slow burn which I know Alona Andrews can do because they do it well in the Kate Daniel series but still I just really love Alona Andrews writing style. I had a lot of fun with this series and I'm looking forward to continuing with the next Older Sisters trilogy and see what happens with her. Then we've got White Knight by Jim Butcher. I think this is the ninth, tenth, ninth book I think maybe in the Dresden Files. So Harry Dresden is a wizard and also a private investigator and as well as solving these different magical crimes he's also involved with the White Council, the Wizards Council who don't always agree with him. He's helping out the police. He's also got some dealing with the fairies and the vampires are at war as well which he's also involved in. So there's a lot of different magical things going on. I really like the bigger story and I like Harry's different relationships with different characters and those are the parts that I find interesting but Harry himself not my favorite person. I've just I've complained about Harry a million times so I'll try not to do it again. However in the book before this one we had a teenage girl introduced In this one the teenage girl was there and I did not appreciate the way that was dealt with but it probably wasn't as bad as it could have been and I did enjoy the investigation though I would still say book number seven was my favorite in the series but I'm going to continue. I think the book has like 17 books so far so we'll see if something at some point can beat book number seven. So if I'm putting these two books up against each other um 
Wildfire wins for sure because the characters just feel much more realistic and everyone feels much more respected. It's much less sexist, so we're gonna go with Wildfire. Okay, our next battle I'm gonna put Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse up against Seasonal Fears by Shauna Maguire. Now for both of these books I actually reread the first books in the series and then read these books which are both second books in the series, but I'm not gonna count my rereads in the battle, even though to be honest, Middle Game would 100% win as the best book of the month, probably. But I've decided rereads don't count. So, firstly, Fevered Star. Um, this one, I have heard a lot of people say it felt like it had middle book syndrome, and I would tend to agree. It did feel like it was lacking in direction a little bit. Uh, I didn't feel like a lot of the stuff the characters did had very clear motivation. Uh, I guess I should tell you what this book's about. So Black Sun, we start out with this young boy, Serapio, and his mother basically blinds him because she has this idea about him becoming some kind of god and taking revenge on the people at the Celestial Tower. So we're also following the Sun Priestess who's in charge at the Celestial Tower. And yes, you can guess, those two end up in conflict as well. Involved in all of this, we have Shiala, who is Teak, and she has some kind of magical powers that are related to the sea. I don't feel like her powers have been fully realized yet, and so I'm interested to see how that's going to evolve in the third book. But in the second book, I did enjoy how these godlike powers are evolving. I didn't feel like enough was done with that. For the most part, Fevered Staff focused on kind of this war that's brewing. And really, if we're going to have a war, I want a war between the gods. I don't really want war with people in it. So I just kind of felt so-so about Fevered Star, didn't quite live up to Black Sun, but I do think there's a lot of potential there in the world and the characters for something really great to happen in the third book. Then we've got Seasonal Fears by Shauna Maguire. So as I said, middle game, amazing, I loved it. We follow these twins, Roger and Dodger, who one is the embodiment of language and the other one is the embodiment of mathematics and they have these like alchemical abilities. However, there's this alchemy organization that's basically trying to manipulate them into becoming gods, but gods that this organization will control. It doesn't go great for the alchemists. But it also doesn't entirely go great for Roger and Dodger, so they really struggle and I love that story. The characters felt so real and the alchemy was so interesting and creative. Then we've got Seasonal Fears. So in Seasonal Fears we've got Harry and Melanie who have been in love since kindergarten, uh, but Melanie has a lot of heart problems and she's really expecting to die very young. So they're not having the greatest time. Then they find out that they are potential candidates to become the representations of winter and summer, but of course this alchemy organization is trying to interfere with this as well and they have to kind of do a bit of a battle to claim their crowns. This story though was so boring. It started out with potential but then the characters basically just stopped feeling at all like real people and they just traveled around to doing nothing while they were long tedious explanations of the alchemy which was not even very creative or interesting. So yeah, I was really disappointed lucky me. So I think you can tell from that I'm gonna put Fevered Star through to the next round. And then we're up to the last battle of the first round. So we've got Confessions by Kane Minato up against After Dark by Haruki Murakami. So Confessions was really twisty and dark and I enjoyed it a lot. It basically starts out with this teacher saying goodbye to class on the last day. And she gives this very long twisty monologue. Uh, but as part of it, she says, I actually know that it was some of the students in this class that were responsible for my four-year-old daughter's death and then she does some things as a form of revenge, but it's not what you're expecting. Uh, I really like the writing style of this, like each chapter is quite long, it's almost like five short stories and they're each kind of around the story. The first bit is the teacher's story, then you get another student's perspective, then you get three students' perspectives and also the mother of one of these students. But almost every chapter has like some kind of surprise element to it. Not everyone, but there were definitely quite a few like what the fuck moments in this book. It's very over the top. I don't know that I would say these characters feel real. At times I felt like it was trying to have a proper message about, you know, like how, what do you do when young people go out of control? Like how do you punish them? Should they be punished or is it not really their fault? But then it would just be so over the top that I was like, no, it can't really be trying to have a proper message, can it? But anyway, it was a very entertaining read and I think if you don't mind things being a little bit what the fuck, then you would really enjoy it. 
And then we've got After Dark by Haruki Murakami. So I've really loved some things by Haruki Murakami and I've also really hated some things by Haruki Murakami and I thought this book might help me decide where I land on him but unfortunately this one was kind of in the middle. I really liked the atmospheric writing. We're following this girl who meets this boy in Denny's late at night. She's trying to avoid going home because there's something going on with her sister but then she also ends up going to help out at this hotel where there's this prostitute that's been beaten up. Now probably the thing that turned me off this book the most was Haruki Murakami's use of periods in the plot. He did this as well in Kafka on the Shore and I really wish he would stop because it's not great. And then as well the ending just kind of was very open-ended and I kind of was left feeling like well what was the point of any of this? So yeah I kind of loved it except for one part but then at the same time I was left very unsatisfied so I don't know how I feel about it. So if I'm putting these two books up against each other I'm definitely going to choose Confessions because even though there are a few weird bits or bits that moved a little bit slower than I would have liked it did blow my mind several times and like really genuinely surprised me. So Confessions is going through to the next round. Okay so I haven't planned this out properly but I think this will be round two. Firstly we're gonna have Goodbye Stacy, Goodbye up against Watch Hollow by Gregory Funaro. I actually don't know the author of Goodbye Stacy, Goodbye because they keep changing the author and illustrator for those books but I will put it here anyway. And honestly I think actually I will pick Watch Hollow as the winner of this round just because I really like the whimsical world and these clockwork animals were just so lovely and comforting to read about. But also the darker element was something I enjoyed as well. So Watch Hollow through to the next round. And then we've got Deathbringer by Derek Landy up against Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. And in this one I would pick Good Girl Bad Blood because I just thought the execution was so great. I enjoyed following along with the investigation. I was really engaged in the story. Whereas Deathbringer, to be honest, even though there were parts I really liked, there were also parts where I really struggled to pay attention. So Good Girl Bad Blood through to the next round. And then we've got Wildfire by Alona Andrews up against Fevered Star by Rebecca Romanhorst. And definitely I would pick Wildfire. I just love Alona Andrews writing style. Kind of the sense of humor but also the sensitivity and the way that emotional elements of the story are dealt with. They're just really great and I enjoy them a lot. So Wildfire through to the next round and then lastly we'll just skip Confessions through into the semi-finals. It's a free pass or whatever, however tournaments work. I don't know, I've been doing these for ages but I just make shit up as I go along. Okay then we're up to the semi-finals. So for our first battle we've got Watch Hollow by Gregory Funaro up against Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This one's a harder one because it kind of, I think both of these books are really great for their demographic. Watch Hollow is more middle grade, Good Girl Bad Blood is YA. I'm neither of these demographics so I guess I'll just go on my engagement. So I really love Watch Hollow. I thought it was adorable. However I was so much more engaged in Good Girl Bad Blood and I just flew through that story so quick because I needed to know what was going to happen next. So Good Girl Bad Blood through to the finals and then we've got Wildfire by Alona Andrews up against Confessions by Kane Minato. This is hard because I would say like the writing style for Wildfire is just so much more consumable. I had like a really great time reading it. I would say Confessions. The writing sometimes still was a little bit to get through because there were definitely parts of the story where you would be like okay but what what is this for? And usually it would turn out to be related to everything and you'd be like oh wow holy crap. But sometimes when I was reading it I did feel like okay okay I don't understand what any of this is here for. So like the reading experience Wildfire would win. However the twists and turns and the what the fuck moments and the fact that Confessions blew my mind in certain parts makes me think I should pick Confessions. Okay it's spreadsheet time. I'm pretty sure I probably rated these very similarly but we'll see what number my spreadsheet has. Hmm I'm actually surprised. I thought my rating for Confessions would be higher but actually my rating for Wildfire was higher and I do think it mainly came down to the writing style. I just really love Alona Andrews writing style. It's like perfect for me. So we're gonna put Wildfire 
through to the finals and that means we are up to the finals and for our final battle we're going to have good girl bad blood by holly jackson up against wildfire by alona andrews i really like the investigation elements of both of these i just really like stories where there's like a mystery and you're following along with someone who's really invested in solving this mystery now ideally I like it when there's some magic involved as well. Like cool magic makes everything better. So for that reason, because the magic is really cool in Wildfire, I'm going to pick Wildfire as the best book of the month. I know Stasi will be happy with that. I know I am very excited about reading the next trilogy in that series. So it definitely deserves to be the best book of the month, even though it probably could have gone either way. Anyway, do let me know if you have read any of the books that I talked about in this video, because I would love to talk with you about them down in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well, and I will see you next time.